Hello, my name is Luis Hess. This is my first live webinar. Uh, please uh, bear with me as we try to work out the kinks of this type of technology, and uh, hopefully this will go as smoothly as I expect it to be. So, to give you a quick uh, introduction, my name is Luis Hess. I am the owner of Hess Law. Uh, we primarily specialize in immigration, uh, real estate, and business law with some civil litigation as part of our practice. What I'm here to do today is provide a quick introduction as to how to do how to immigrate or how to do immigration through real estate investment. Uh, what I would like to focus on today is both the E2 visa and L1 visa. E2 visa is a treaty-based visa. That means that the United States has a treaty with whatever home country the potential applicant is from. Um, so if you're from Canada, from Mexico, there's a treaty that allows um, somebody from Canada or from Mexico to come to the United States and get a non-immigrant visa. Um, if you're from other countries such as India, uh, there is no such uh, visa available because there's no such treaty between the United States and India. In order to qualify for an E-2 visa investment, uh, you must invest at least $100,000 into the United States. But when we're talking about real estate investment. It's not just, the investment itself doesn't include your own home. It doesn't include homestead. Uh, what it means is that you're investing in different prop in multiple properties. Uh, we have been successful in getting E2 visas for clients who have uh, obtained, have purchased four or more properties. It can be apartments, it can be commercial properties, it can be residential homes. Um, the homes have to have value. Um, easily 100000 is something that most people are going to meet during that period of time uh, as they're doing the investment. But uh, what's more important is the quantity. Part of the reason is that you can hire additional people to help uh, manage the property. You can hire a manager, you can hire maintenance people, you can hire multiple uh, employees or contractors. And the reason that's important is part of the E2 visa investment requires that uh, not only are you investing capital into the United States, but the uh, investment itself is creating jobs. Um, the, so if you can get four investment properties excluding a home, and all of them of course be a aggregate total of more than $100,000, uh, you can get an E2 visa that essentially is good for one to five years. Uh, you're going to find uh, the visa validity period is going to be based on where the person is from. Somebody from Mexico is going to have a visa that's valid for one year versus somebody from Canada, well, their investment visa to get it is good for five years. Um, the great thing about it, it, the great thing about an E2 investment visa is that a once the person has, once the beneficiary has a, a, a visa in hand, they can have their spouse, their spouse can also work. So um, while the investor is limited to working within their own business, the spouse, once they receive their own work authorization, they can work wherever they want to, whether it's Exxon, whether it's DSW. There's no requirement uh, whatsoever for the uh, spouse to work, but if they choose to do so, they can. Uh, the great thing about the E2 investment visa as well is that it's renewable indefinitely uh, for the life of the business so long as there's investments maintained that the investor is continuing to continuously purchasing properties, continuously to grow their business, uh, continue to hire uh, employees or contractors to help maintain the property, the visa can be renewed indefinitely. So, if you are an investor here in the United States in real estate investment, and let's say you're buying one, one, two, three, or more properties per year, uh, you can continue to, the investor and the spouse can continue to stay here for almost indefinitely. Uh, the closest thing you essentially that you can get to a green card is actually getting to it. Uh, other benefits of investing in real estate here in the United States is that the real estate's assets will continue to increase in value. Uh, for the most part, uh, especially here in Texas, proper real estate value, whether it's commercial, whether it's residential, 
will continue to increase, which it has been over the last uh, 30 plus years. Uh, e to do, another great aspect of the E2 visa investment is that it's a quick visa to prepare. Uh, unlike other visas that might take it did several months to start and complete the process, once a individual has what well, I would say the requisite amount of investment properties, four or more residential properties, maybe one commercial property, once we have all the financial statements, once it's been properly uh, designated as a type of, excuse me, once it's been properly titled as being under the single uh, entity, legal entity, like an LLC and a corporation, it's a very quick pro is a very quick application to to repair. And the other uh, great aspect of an E2 investment visa is that it provides asset protection for an investor. And that is uh, one thing that I've noticed with investors here, uh, for especially foreign national investors in the United States, is they will purchase the property underneath their own uh, individual name. The downside of that is that it opens up a whole host of liability for an investor in terms of where to go wrong. The way we set up these these investment properties is we typically will create a holding company and under each under a holding company we'll create one different legal entity to hold each individual property so that any type of liability from one property does not spill out into creating a liability for the other properties therefore providing asset protection for the individual investor. The downside of doing an E2 visa is that it's difficult to get a legal permanent resident or a green card. The reason being is, for the most part, the green card process is not intended for an E2 real estate investment visa, unless we're talking about an L1, which I'll get to here in a minute. The um, downside, another downside of the E2 visa is that children of the, uh, of the investor and the spouse will eventually age out. Once they hit age 21, they can no longer maintain their status as an E2 visa dependent. Once it happens, they have to go either find a different type of visa, uh, more often than not a student visa, a work visa, or go back to their home country. Um, but every case is different, and so there may be different options that we're not considering here, at least in this particular um, uh, webinar. The, and again, the other downside of, the, of this type of visa is that uh, you have to maintain the type of business. So let's say a person from um, Central America, from one of the European countries, invests in the US, uh, purchases eight, nine, ten different real estate properties, but for one reason or another, after they get their visa, they have to sell the property to raise capital for some other type of investment deal that they have going in their own country or in a different business venture here in the US. So once the properties are being sold and there's no longer, uh, there are no longer investment properties, the investment visa will not be renewed. Uh, the person can continue to maintain their visa so long as the visa hasn't expired, but once it comes time to renew and demonstrate to the review and to the immigration officer that the investment is still here in the U.S., it's going to be denied. Um, so what you can always purchase properties, you can always sell properties, but when it comes time to renew and you need to have at least a sufficient number of real estate properties in the portfolio in order to maintain that type of visa. But it's a straightforward application. It's an easy way to, to, to come to the U.S. is an easy way for to get work experience here. It's an easy way for children uh, to um, go to school here, whether public school or private school. L1 visa is an interesting aspect of real estate, immigration through real estate. Uh, we have clients who have uh, real estate management companies in their home country. Uh, people in Cancun, people in Veracruz, people in Puerto Vallarta who have multiple properties that they maintain under some type of holding that they have in their home country, like an SLA. The, the so they have already demonstrated uh, knowledge of handling real estate investment properties. And if they're looking to expand, they can actually create a brand new company from their home country, wherever that happens to be, whether Mexico, whether Canada, whether 
somewhere in Central America, their home country, and they're opening a new company here in the U.S. So let's say they have investment properties in Cancun, Mexico. Let's just go with that for the moment as an, as an example. Um, they want to expand their reach. They want to invest here in the U.S. They open up their new company as a holding company, just like we're doing for the E2, and then buying additional properties, which we put as subsidiaries. So essentially what we're doing is we're transferring the owner uh, from their home country to here, and that's called an L1A visa transfer. Um, the L1A's requirements is that the person must have, must be in a management position for at least one full year, that is 12 months, and the last 36 months in their home country, and that they have a real and existing business in their home country, which can be demonstrated through tax, return, tax returns, through an organization, organizational chart, through brochures, through letters of references from customers or clients that they, they handle. Um, and they essentially want to do the exact same thing here underneath the same type of legal structures. Uh, so parent companies to subsidiary. Um, once they're able to do that, open the business, have an office, have staff, that visa is initially good for one year. Then it's good for two years and two years and two years for a total of seven years. Um, the benefit of this visa is that while assets do increase in value, it does provide a possibility of having a green card. The, for at least purposes of this demonstration, the green card requirements are the same with the L1 requirements. That is, there is a company uh, that the foreign national works for in their home country. The, um, the person is, is working in a is working in a um, management position and that the company uh, does have employees, does have uh, sufficient assets has, and has sufficient reasons for having a company here in the U.S. that's doing exactly the, more or less the same type of work. In this instance, real estate investment. Uh, while, the, while the individual is handling, excuse me, while the individual uh, is working within the business, working the real estate management, uh, the spouse can also get work authorization, just like an E2 visa. The, um, and again, just like an E2 visa, the spouse does not have to work in the same business. They can work for Baker Hughes, Shell, it doesn't matter. And, and on top of all that, there is no requirement to do a, uh, for, there's no requirement for the spouse to actually work um, whatsoever. If the spouse chooses not to, that's fine. There's no requirement by immigration. Um, and just as much, the children um, of, the, of the investor and, and the spouse can come to the U.S. under same type of visa, they can go to school, um, elementary school, middle school, high school, university, until age 21. Once they hit age 21, they age out, uh, which is, a, again, a downside that you'll see here with the E2 visa. The difference being is that as soon as the individual comes here in L1, as soon as they have sufficient staff, as soon as they have sufficient real estate investment, um, it's, easy, it's easier to apply for a green card, which once the investor applies for a green card and obtains it, everybody else in the family will obtain it so long as either it's the spouse or children under age 21. If the green card comes after a child turns to age 21, the child is unfortunately out of luck. Uh, the downside of doing the L1 visa is that it requires heavy capital investment. So the person already has to have some type of real estate investment in their home country, and then they are doing a real estate investment here in the U.S. So it's capital intensive. Not everybody has that much money to invest here in the U.S. Um, the capital doesn't necessarily have to be uh, cash from the investor in terms of their own cash. They can still take out loans. That's still allowable for both the E2 visa purpose and the L1. Um, but the other downside is that the documents must be translated. All documents must be translated into English from whatever home country they're from. So. L1 starts here in the United States. We file with immigration services. All documentation must be in English. So if it's in Hindi, it's in Spanish, it's in French, it's in Mandarin Chinese. 
all of that has to be translated. Um, but once the L1 is approved, the L1 visa is typically picked up into our home country. The, the E2 can be done here in the U.S. as a change of status, or it can be done as a visa application at the U.S. Embassy or consulate, whatever the rules are for that particular country. Um, so the entire purpose of, of this quick rep webinar is to provide some information about how people can get a non-immigrant visa through real estate investment under an E2 or an L1 visa, which can eventually turn into a green card. But all of, of course, all of that is based on the specific facts and circumstances of each individual case. If you have any individual questions, if you'd like to set up a consult, uh, please give us a call at 281-205-8540. Again, my name is Luis Hess. Thank you very much for attending today's webinar. Um, any feedback that you can provide, I'd certainly like to hear so that we can improve on uh, future webinars that we'll be uh, hosting in the future. And I appreciate uh, your attendance today. Again, my name is Luis Hess. Telephone number is 281-205-8540. And if you have any questions, please give us a call and we'd be happy to help. Thank you.